My father uh, came to this country from Russia, a young Jewish fella, probably about 17, 18 years of age, went into the cigar business. He learned how to make cigars. And that was great because he had a nice uh, business going. And uh, everything was fine until the Depression. And then Walgreen Drug came into Milwaukee, and they they uh, bought up the drugstores that my father supplied with cigars. So what do you do? And Sam called up my dad, and he said, Leo, come down to see me in my office, which he did. And he said, I, I've learned of a vacancy, but, you know, I hate to tell you about it because it's for... Uh, a position at the Washington Park Zoo uh, to be a zookeeper, to take care of the animals. And he said, I don't think that's a job for a young Jewish fellow. Do you? And my father smiled. He said, who do I see? Yes, <laughs> that's not a problem for me. So my father went to the zoo, and actually he was a zookeeper for almost 30 years. And the rhino wasn't one of his charges. He didn't take care of, the, of Yaakov the rhino. That was his name for him. He had a name for all the animals. I don't know why he named him Yaakov, but he had a, a Hebrew or a Jewish name for most of the animals. You see? Well, his, uh, one of his buddies, one of the other zookeepers, came running over to him and said, Leo, please come. Something terrible has happened to Yaakov. I wanted to feed him, and he's in that outside, you know, uh, enclosure of his, and I couldn't get near the place because as I got closer, he was charging against the fence. He was snorting. He was dashing around. He was pawing the earth. I mean, it was so unlike him. I mean, this sweet, quiet, nice, big animal was carrying on something fierce. Please come with me. That says, well, he said, we're going to have to kill the animal. I'm sorry, but nobody can get in that cage with him and find out what's wrong. So I'll come, and we'll have to do, put him down. My father said, oh, no, not Yaakov. You can't do that. He said, bring your case of, of stuff. Bring a tranquilizer gun and shoot it into Yaakov. The animal will go out, and he said, and then he said, we are going to give him an enema. My father called up the fire station, which was just about three blocks away, and he said, fellas, bring over your big pumper with the big hose on it. We need it over here at the zoo. So that's what they did. And they're walking back to almost to the other side of the zoo. And all of a sudden, they heard an explosion. My dad looked at Buddy, the other zookeeper. Let's go. And they ran back to Yaakov's enclosure. And there was Yaakov. He was just his own happy, sweet self, awake and, and quiet and almost with a smile greeting his buddy, the zookeeper. But because of that story, I had another, you know, like they say today, I had a new take <laughs> on rhinos. And, of course, in years now, we know that they're endangered. And so I, I began collecting little replicas of rhinos. And uh, I'm known as a rhino lady. I have it all over the house. People uh, come to see me. They bring me another rhino. So it's a, it's a story uh, for me, uh, it's whimsical, but also has a great deal of meaning because my father being involved in this, he had humility, but he didn't walk like this. He was uh, a, a man who cared about people and also he w was a man who seemed to be content in his life. He loved his wife very much. He loved his children, and he loved the animals. <laughs> and 
The last thing my father did, which can give you a clue about this man, well, he was a socialist, I have to add that, so he cared about not only his own individual concerns, but he cared about uh, improving the lot of other people, and that's why he belonged to the union. The last thing he did before he died, he learned that there was a young fellow, a black fellow, who needed a job and had come there to apply for a position in the zoo. Maybe my father remembered where he was 30 years ago, and that young fellow got the job because my father made it possible, really, for him to come in. There was never a black hired in that position. And I have to say, my father was, was my father and another man were the only two Jews of all the zookeepers in that zoo, too. He came home and he said to my mom, I feel so good because that young fellow is going to get that job. Well, that same day, my father went out to mail a package. He crossed the street and a car came along driven by someone who was very drunk and he hit my father. And my father died two weeks later. And when he died, I have to tell you that the mayor of the city came to the funeral, besides all the zookeepers, besides many people that I didn't know. It was something to see. And it was a write-up in the paper about him and all that he had done in the zoo. So he was quite an unusual man. Uh, he loved politics. And when I went into, uh, so to speak, low uh, not low government, but local government. <laughs> that was a Freudian slip. Uh, local government, uh, uh, and I was a member of the city council in Warren. When I would walk in before the meeting began, as I walked into the building, and I knew it was going to be a tough meeting, I always would say, this was after my father was dead, Pa, I'm going in, I want you to be with me and help me. And he always did. <laughs> so.